Hello, my name is Gary Mansfield, and this is a bonus episode of the Ministry of Arts podcast. Now, as ever, let's begin by banging these bongos. Hello and welcome to bonus episode number 27 of the Ministry of Arts podcast. Today you're going to be meeting Sasha Bowles. I showed with Sasha Alton before last at Thorpe Stavery's factory project where she was showing in a group curated by Rosalind Davis which we obviously cover in this episode today. And among other things, we also cover Sasha's most recent installation in two Kensington hotels, which coincidentally, later on in the year, become part of the Kensington and Chelsea Art Trail. And I'm very pleased to say we'll be partnering with those at that time. And that runs from June until August. But until then, to get an idea of the quality of work you can expect on that trail, please come with me to meet Sasha Bowles. But I'm, I, but I'm, I'm quite good at not having anything that I don't really need or love. Yeah. So I've got extra stuff. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, Sasha, I have seven questions that I ask each artist. Okay. And the first being, how would you explain what you do to someone that doesn't know your work? Yeah, it's a very good question, isn't it? It's the, it's the elevator pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I, uh, what do I do? I mischievously reinterpret re-inter- the past. Um, it was one of the things I do. Um, so I work cross-disciplinary. I'd still call myself a painter, although I don't do so much painting now. Um, and I make interactive theatrical backdrops. Um, uh, I take elements from the past. So I, I, no, I normally work within whatever um, environment I'm given. So I like, I like to bring that within it. Uh, so quite recently I was offered a, a gallery in, in Ramsgate and he was going away for the whole of January. So I said, you, would, would you like it? It's like, well, yes, is the obvious answer. <laughs> but the gallery was shut. Um, so I did it like a diorama. Yeah which was fantastic. And then I brought in a lot of the kind of Ramsgate to it. A lot of my architecture that I like to use is 18th century. Um, and Ramsgate has a lot of that. Um, and then I thought, well, I need to make it about the seaside. So then my classical sculptures went to the seaside and they had rubber rings on and swimsuits. And, and that, was, that was an amazing experience because it was, the public could just see it from the outside. And I kept kind of coming in and bringing new things in. And at the end of it, we opened it up and people could come in and, and play, basically. Yeah, yeah. I had um, costumes and uh, props and stuff. And it was, just, it was just so nice for art not to be separate from the viewer. I guess that's one of the things I like to do is I like to bring the viewer into it, whether it's a painting or whether it's um, an installation that the viewer is also very much part of it. Well, it, from, from my own experience, your work does have quite a, a gravity pull. It does pull you into the artwork. Because, I mean, it, the, the one that I saw, which was at Fort Stavry's yeah. factory project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you um, showed well, of course, your wonderful skit. Exactly. So, yeah, so summer before last, um, yeah, you were in the corner and, um, yeah, intrigue set in probably 30 yards away because it was such a bold object and yeah it, it did just pull you in well I mean it was that, that that whole exhibition was just fabulous I think it was the first big scale sculpt, sculpture exhibition after the whole lockdown thing and you could feel a kind of breathing out of people of how there was a, a definite energy everywhere yeah. wasn't there yeah I'm not, I'm not and I'm not just talking about the artists I'm talking about the people coming and it yeah. was just hello world Thank you. And to have the opportunity of that space, it's like I haven't seen that kind of space since the 90s, you know. Yeah. It was just wonderful. And it was big enough for people who were still a little bit wary of mixing with others. Yeah. To have a lot of space to move around the entire 
the entire gallery or project, if you like. Yeah, no, I mean, I thought everything about that was was just brilliant. And the, yeah, the organiser, everything, it was just a joy. And also for me to have the opportunity to build something that big was fantastic. Would you be able to just give a little description of what it was? Yeah, so um, it was four metres square and it's all made out of paper and cardboard. And there was already an existing um, staircase there. So when I went to the space, I just I, I just wanted that that position because um, it enabled the uh, structure to be um, applied to it. So it was um, lots of different um, pieces of architecture, mostly 18th century um, pillars and um, interior and stone and statues. And I made a huge backdrop which covered the staircase. And then it's layered with, with more, um, it's all photocopies. So the photographs I've taken, photographs I've found, free images that I then photo montage and, and layer. And it's part of it is that it's obviously paper, that it's almost like a sort of a circus that can be rolled up and taken away and put somewhere else. Brilliant. And that you can see around the back, that you, you know that it's cardboard, that you that there's it's all about facade and fakery and the black and white thing is is another kind of thing of, of adding to that fakery i kind of relate it to old black and white films and the tv that i grew up with and how it was so obviously not real and yet as a as a viewer you take that leap and the difference between that and uh cgi where it's all done for you and you kind of sit back and you're no longer a participant, it's happening yeah. to you. Yeah. And I just love that thing where you, look, again, the viewer is a participant. And lovely things happen there of random people performing in it. And um, because it was black and white, if anybody in any colour came and stood in front of it. It, it just pinged it out, yeah. Oh, it was, it was just lovely. It was really lovely. And the scale of it meant that people, it was human scale. Yeah, it was, it was great. Although it was quite tricky working with the uh, uh, the environment in there because it was it was damp and so the paper started doing other stuff. <laughs> like, oh, good. okay. But then you learn from that, and I worked yeah. out. Okay, so paper curls in this atmosphere. So maybe I go with that. It gives it another three D element. So just just go with it. It's all right. You learn every time you do something. But what you say about um, your work being like a backdrop, that was the beauty of it, because you see it and then you're allowed to see, but you're invited pretty much to look behind and shatter the illusion that you've built up in your own Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. And also to become part of it, because we're, you know, we're, we're all a bit of a facade, aren't we, of, of how we present ourselves and, and all of that. That's, that's just life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like when I was looking at it as a sculptural piece, I wasn't sure whether I was invited to walk up the stairs and sort of peer over at points, you know. Then, you know, it was mentioned that going up and down the stairs is absolutely fine. Yeah, because I built a kind of like a cardboard staircase at the end of the stairs as well. So that kind of gave a kind of an invite to people if they wanted to go up there. And then, of course, you had the view up there of, of the whole space, which was fantastic. Superb. Uh, did you have art in the home growing up, Sasha? I did. Yeah, my 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 dad collected art, and I'm I'm pretty sure that's where my my first interest in in it came about. Um, yeah, so he's there's always been art in the home, um, and he only collected what he loved, ne never for an an investment. Um, and he's yeah had a had a great collection. Sometimes he would buy something, and then he couldn't <laughs> afford it, so he'd have to take it back. But then he would. <laughs> <laughs> And over time, he, he managed to, uh, to keep keep the work. <laughs> Brilliant. But he did t teach me that you should only buy things that you love. And yeah, there's no, there should no, be no other reason of uh, collecting art other than you love it. I mean, I, I have quite a nice um, art collection and every single one of them has a story. That it, you know, I've probably met most of the artists or their friends. And during lockdown was uh, fantastic. The the thing that Matthew Burroughs um, yeah. set up with the artist support pledge was just amazing. Um, and I managed to sell a few pieces, which meant that I invested in other 
other artists, which was just, yeah, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. What point do you think that you decided you wanted to be an artist? Do you know? Well, I've, I've always made stuff as a, as a kid. I mean, I used to, on a Sunday afternoon, they used to have old movies on, which I'd watch with, with my mum. And then I'd, I'd go upstairs and I'd, I'd make all the costumes, which obviously were terrible, but um, <laughs> so I've always made stuff. And I kind of feel like I'm still just doing all the stuff from Blue Peter. I made everything on Blue Peter, gave them to my brothers as presents and the poor things got these terrible things made out of matchboxes and stuff. <laughs> And I'm still Brilliant. basically doing that, just cutting and sticking. I think one of the turning points was going to see there was a, uh, Peter Blake had a retrospective at Tate Britain when I was a teenager. And I think that was quite a turning point of art could be anything. Yeah. It wasn't just painting, it wasn't just sculpture. But there was a lot of, yeah, more structural theatrical work there. And that was a big turning point and fun. They're beautiful, those realizations. They're not no. a daily occurrence. But um, when they do come to you, and it could be absolutely anything, it could be a, a bus passing by with a little yeah. bit of inspiration jumping off the advert or anything at all. But when you have those little moments, yeah, they're re really quite special. Yeah, because I think we have stuff buzzing around in our head subliminally. And then, like you say, you see something and, it's, and it just connects up something that we didn't know we'd been thinking yeah. about. It's that little missing piece and it's like, oh, yes. Now I know what it is I'm doing. I've had a couple of those. Mm. And often it's an opportunity you're given. I mean, like the, the, the skip opportunity for you, it, it brought ideas together that you wouldn't have necessarily have, have thought about in that way. And it consolidates things, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, with, with that one, the skip in particular, it was, a, it was definitely a, a growing point for me insofar as when I did create it, it meant so much more to me than... I ever thought it would when I was doing the sketches and, and yeah. working out some paper. It, yeah. I, I became a part of it. I know it sounds very arty-farty, but, yeah, I definitely became a part of it rather than it becoming a part of me, I'm sure of that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And that was something that had been kind of in, in the background for a long time, hadn't it? Very much, so, 20 yeah. years or so. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and, and it, they last, these ideas. You forget about them, but they're there. They're waiting for the opportunity. Yeah. Did you study at university yourself? I did. I went straight from school to foundation and then I did a BA. Where was that? Sorry. Um, I went to Central for my foundation and then I went to the Byam Shaw. Oh, nice. Uh, both which were just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And then when I left art school, I found it really hard. Um, and so I didn't actually make any art for quite a long time. And I set up a business making uh uh, decorative furniture I did that for quite a long time and then it was one of those things when you're at someone else's house and you meet new people and they're just asking about what you did and what you'd like to do and it was timing my daughter was just started secondary school and they said you know what would you do if you could do anything I said I'd be an artist and they said well why don't you and I thought yeah why don't I the most <laughs> simple question that you've never thought of asking with, yourself. Yeah. Well, I think it was timing. I think because, you know, my daughter didn't need me in the same way. Obviously, she needed me. But yeah, I, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's different. Your headspace is different. And, uh, you know, other things have changed. So we, we shut down the business, sold our house, and I started making art. Yeah. What was you making at the time? Uh, what, when I started making art again? Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of went into it as a kind of business way because that's what I've been doing. Uh, but it, so I was, I was painting about my life. Yeah, they're all very domestic paintings. Uh, I, I guess a little bit in the way of uh, Paula Rego, but without the, the the politics that she has in yeah, hers. Yeah. Um, and so they, were, they were, I guess, in many ways, they were theatrical paintings. So they were, they would have uh, yeah fat. Weird families going goings on happening in them. <laughs> <laughs> and I liked it when you mentioned from the start that um, your work is seen as mischievous. And when I was looking at your paintings, that's very much the word that that came to mind. Then was yeah. was mischievous. You've you've taken a classical painting and yeah, just given a little bit of you to the to the painting itself. 
Yeah, well, in 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 the paintings, they they started from uh, with the uh, there's a whole series called Taking Liberties with the Masters, and I was thinking about how so much of um, the old master work, or so much art generally, we see through secondary imaging rather than the actual work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, now I guess we see a lot of it um, through our screen, but uh, we see a lot of it in books. And of course, they're not the work. They're on paper. There's no paint. They're the wrong scale. The colour's all wrong. Yeah. So part of it was bringing them back to being paintings. And the thing that I love about those portraits isn't the sitter. It's the... It's what the artist does with the paint and how they can reproduce uh, the fabric and the hair and all the rest of it so amazingly. And when I go to a, a gallery, a National Gallery or something, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking really closely at all of that. So they were a way of making them back into paintings because they're all painted with oil paint directly onto the reproduction. And also they're kind of now a portrait of the original artist, because I take away the sitter, I always cover up the human. Yeah. So really they're a portrait of the original artist. And they're also, because they're small, there's an intimacy where you have to go up close. So again, it's a, a slight manipulation of the viewer. What is the size? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're book pages. Oh, brilliant, okay. Yeah, so they could, but they're all postcards, so they're small. Yeah, they're intimate. Oh, superb. Of all of the artworks, which one do you think has got the strongest emotional connection? Is there, is there anything that stands out to you? I, I, think, I think the most recent work, with it being more immersive, definitely, because I, I, I've started to do a little bit of a performance within it, and I think, I think that, that kind of breaks another barrier with me. So there's a kind of emotional... Yeah, I guess, I guess that... Have you used yourself in your work before? Yeah, but it's normally, uh, I, I would film it. So I haven't yet done live performance, other than at Ramsgate, where it was, wasn't performance, we were all just having a, having yeah. a wild time. <laughs> that can I, be the same thing. Yeah, but I, I, was, I did make a, a cardboard swimsuit, so I was performing in, in that way. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and actually during that, so I had cardboard waves, and there was a woman who lived upstairs who I'd met dur during the um, um, installation. And she came down in her swimming costume and came and swam across the waves. Oh, superb. I love you. I love you. What a wonderful thing to do. It's just joyous. And when, when was that? So 2022? That was, uh, last January, December to January. Yeah. Oh, fair play to her for doing it in January. I know. I know. Well, she swims in the sea every day. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and now yeah. in cardboard waves too. <laughs> then a, a little bit of cold to us is nothing at all to her, without a doubt. <laughs> and Sasha, if there was you and five other artists, past and present, what would your ideal group show be? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, well, Louise Bourgeois would be amazing. I think Francis Bacon would have to be in there somewhere. Uh, God, who's the, the dream people? Sarah Lucas. Um, oh, it's a tricky question, isn't it? We'd have to go, go back to, to an old, old master, definitely. Uh, uh, Gainsborough, let's get him in there. And we should have somebody very, very contemporary. Well, we, we, should have, we should have Peter Blake, as he was my original, shouldn't there we? You go. There you That's go. Good. Lovely. Nice combo. And what do you think you'd like to do, Sasha, if you wasn't an artist? Oh, is there other things? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me this long to get here. No. You've just had a connection with boats, so maybe you'd like to be a pirate. Because <laughs> <laughs> art is everything. Art's just about thinking. Yeah. It's just about thinking and um, finding answers to questions that you don't even know what the question is. But it, it, but it connects to everything, you know. Oh, I agree. It? I agree. Yeah, because it is, I do think it's just about thinking. Because yeah, it's, it's just a way of being open, isn't it? And you look at something and it's got many different answers. You know, what is that? 
and you look at it in a different way and it becomes something else and then you talk to the artist and it becomes something else and and it it feeds back into you the whole time and it, it questions you and is it fed into your children is it genetic uh well my, my daughter is very creative um so i don't know about whether it's ge- genetic i think i think it's just about being open isn't it and questioning things yeah so she certainly got got that um yeah and what have you got coming up at the moment Coming up at the moment, I have a, a very nice um, thing happening, which is just like, I still can't get my head around it. So I've, I've been invi- invited by this lovely curator, Vestalia Chilton, and she um, asked me to do part of the interiors of a hotel in South Kensington. Brilliant. So that's a whole new thing for me. Um, so I've done the reception and one bedroom and that's going to be unveiled on Wednesday. So I guess, I guess everybody who comes in to stay in the hotel become a part of it as well. Yeah. So you've gone into sort of, is it interior design or installation of artwork? How do you well, I guess it? it's a bit of both because I've um, I've done my, so- my normal photo montage, but then it's been printed onto this um, on vinyl, which has uh, then been put over the walls. Um, so that'll be permanently there. But then within the bedroom, um, we've extended to uh, some soft furnishings. So that's a new thing. Nice. Um, and I've also done a few ceramics as well, cups and things. So, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting to, to, to see it translated in that way. And what hotel is it in? It's called the Gainsborough and it's in South Kensington. Brilliant. And is that going to be part of the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's so that that's permanent, and it's opposite another hotel that they uh, that's the, the same company own called the Exhibitionist, where lots of artists have um, uh, d- done different rooms and the reception, and that's that's permanent as well. But this has a different feel to it. And how did it feel for you to have your work in a hotel and sort of crossing? Not, not that there's a barrier, but at least crossing that into another world of, of interior design. Yeah, no, I think it's very exciting. I, th- I, 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 I mean, I don't know how I feel completely yet because it hasn't uh, hasn't opened. Well, the hotel is open, but yeah. seeing the work going, because I was there when the um, the printers came, who are a fantastic a company called Colour Sonic. I mean, they're just amazing. And um, so I made it all on my computer and then... Uh, sent them the designs and everything and then to see it all put up I felt like I was inside my computer (laughs) oh wow wow and somebody else is doing it all for me because normally it's it's all me just cutting and sticking and it yeah it was amazing absolutely amazing and do you think the soft furnishings could be a sideline for your own it could be yeah it'd be great it'd be great to actually make some money from something (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> make a change, wouldn't it? Apparently, some people do. <laughs> and what? Um, <laughs> I've I've met a few, but I've never experienced it myself. <laughs> um, and and what are the the soft furnishings? How many are there? What what sorts? Uh, well, it's uh, done cushions, lovely velvet feather feather filled cushions, uh, bedspread, and a net curtain. Brilliant. And your work is ideal for um, for that hotel. It's, it's, it's a Georgian hotel, isn't it? It is, yeah. So it's like it's two Georgian houses that have been knocked together. Yeah. So it's it's just it's just perfect, and it's um, just over the road from the Natural History Museum and the Victorian Albert Museum, which obviously are you know two. Of so them. you're among good company sessions. Yeah, yeah, and you know the the V and A. I could go to every day of my life and still see something new it's just so inspiring it's amazing yeah and the, the hotel's called the Gainsborough and on the, the facade of the Victorian Albert Museum um, is a statue of Gainsborough so it, uh, it's, there's, a, there's a lovely connection between it all yeah and did you include that statue in your design at all I haven't included the statue but I've um, I've included Gainsborough um, in as much as the figures I've used have his kind of elegance 
And also, I mean, I'm a huge, huge fan of Gainsborough, and I've um, interviewed in his paintings before. But he also, you know, he's a quintessential, or thought of as quintessential British portrait and landscape painter. And he did go out and paint in the landscape, but he also mostly made models in his studio and okay. painted for those. And the models, <laughs> instead of trees, he used broccoli <laughs> and, rocks and mirrors and stuff. And I just love that. And it fits in completely with my kind of mischievous surrealness. Yeah. Yeah. And I love this idea of people looking at his landscapes and seeing England, but they're looking at broccoli. It's yeah, brilliant. superb. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and the Gainsborough Hotel, so did you say it was permanent? Yes. Oh, well, so it's, well, it's well, I mean, nothing's permanent. No, but <laughs> there's, there's no, it's not on show for a, a length of time. Not as far as I know. No, it's been commissioned for, for, to, to, to stay in the reception. Yeah. Okay. And I think, I mean, I'm lucky enough that it's going to be there for yeah, hopefully a long time, that it's a, you know, it's a really good place to meet people and to show, to show the work. Because it's, I mean, it's, it, your work's very elegant anyway, isn't it? If you don't mind me saying. No, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got a contemporary feel, hasn't it? With the, you know, it is, it is, a stunning piece of work, if you don't mind me saying. Thank you, thank you. And other than the Gainsborough session, have you got anything else coming up in the near future? Yes, I've got another uh, project which involves um, uh, Rosalind Davis um, and Laura Hudson, and this is going to be in Jersey. So that should hopefully be I think, September. So um, they invited, I think there's maybe 10 or 12 of us and it's a project all about home. And uh, we went out there earlier last year for uh, an R&D, um, spent a week there, which was just amazing, meeting each other. And then we put in our proposals. So yeah, so that'll be in uh, yeah, September of this year. And is that something that Ros is doing or is that via someone else? Yeah, so it's, um, it's, the, it's the Jersey um, Art Museum. It's okay. Jersey Art House, so it's Laura Hudson, um, and then she invited Rosalind um, as part of it, and they both invited people, so it's a, they're, they're doing it together. Oh no, it was just that I um, done one of these just last week with a guy in Jersey okay. who said he was bringing some artists over from the mainland to put on an exhibition up in Jersey. That's the only reason I asked if it was. Oh, higher. okay. It was you know, it's happening in Jersey, <laughs> isn't it? Just which is excellent, yeah. It's a it's, yeah. Are you going out for that? Oh, definitely, yeah. I'll be part of um, doing the install as well and, and stay there, yeah. Have you been there my, before? My work, I don't, it doesn't exist until I've, I've made it. You see what I mean? So when I actually install, it's when it becomes real, yeah. Otherwise, it's just kind of bits and pieces on the floor or in my computer. So the installation is always, uh, very exciting and it changes during the installation as well brilliant and have you been on the island before well just just this last year when we when we went out for a week all the artists um and it was yeah it was wonderful it was a, a, a great week and uh, got to know jersey a little bit um and finally where can people see what you do be it website or social media on social media on instagram so i'm sasha bowls one Okay. Oh, and, and I should mention also, uh, 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 I've also got a solo exhibition on at the minute in the Exhibitionist Hotel opposite <laughs> the Gainsborough. I should remember that. And what uh, you, especially as you mentioned the Exhibitionist, don't I know. What's, what's going I know. on in the Exhibitionist? I know. So in, in the Exhibitionist, um, in the reception there, I've got a, a backdrop behind the reception, and then I've got um, about 20 of my um, intervention paintings into old masters. So they're all in there. Yes. And is, is that in the reception? Yeah, so that's all in the reception. And is that okay for the general public to go yes. in and view it or is it just for customers? No, no, it's for everybody to come in. Um, they have a really lovely bar there with very good cocktails. So anybody can go in and they're very, very welcoming. Um, so they can go in there anytime. Yeah, so and that'll be on for three months. And, and it finishes when? Uh, so April. Brilliant. And 
if we just recap for the social media and website and then I can cut the last bit out. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's quite all right. It doesn't matter at all. That's what that's what I'm here for. And as far as as far as social media and <laughs> as far as social media and website is concerned, once again, how okay, can people so, see what you do? Yeah, so I'm on um, Instagram, <laughs> Sasha Bowles One. And my website is sashabowls.co.uk. Sasha, that's all my questions asked. I'm looking forward to seeing your work in the Gainsborough and Excellent. the Exhibitionist. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. So nice to chat to you, Gary. I'll let you get on your way. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you. Have a good day. And you. Okay. I'll speak to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. If you've got an exhibition or any other creative project within the arts, or even just want to promote your own artwork, you could do that in podcast form similar to the one you've just listened to. They start at a convenient price point that is comfortable for any artist working on a budget. This podcast itself is created by working artists and we know how important that is. So to find out more information, you can email us on ministryofartsorg at gmail.com or on Instagram at Ministry of Arts Org. Ta-da!